came for a little ride up the mountain and thought I would share with you guys what I have built my uh, power supply that I built for my pickup truck. Good camping power supply too. And uh, basically what it is, well, let me demonstrate it first. I've got this light hooked up because it's got a load sense on the inverter. And uh, that's, to, that's so you can leave it on and ready, but conserve battery power. And so what it does, it goes into a sleep mode, but it sends pulses out looking for a load. And when it detects a load, it comes on. So, there we go. It's on now. So I usually use a light of some sort, you know, to give it a give it a load to turn it on before I try to use any inductive loads with it. It'll come up with just an inductive load, like this skill saw, for example. But. Uh, but it's probably not good for the motor in the saw. So as you can see, it does run the saw. Runs a lot of stuff. And it's rated at 2500 watts continuous and I think up to 8000 watts surge. It's an old trace inverter, and uh, trace is not made anymore, but they used to be uh, the absolute top of the line inverter that you could buy before Outback and all that existed. And uh, the tr I think the, the first best inverter was the uh, heart interface, and then after that came the trace. And this is the original uh, industrial duty uh, trays. So anyway, the great thing about it, now you can see I've got, uh, what I did is I, I bought a 12 gauge, 50 foot uh, 12 gauge drop cord. And I cut it. I cut it at about 20 feet. And uh, 20 feet from the outlet. And this inverter has a uh, has a built-in three-stage battery charger, which is a really good charger for uh, you know really really good for the battery bank and everything. And I think it's it's good at uh, up to 120 amps. Of course, with this small battery bank, I wouldn't want to run it at 120 amps. That would be too much on a regular basis, anyway. I could probably do that if I really needed to get it back up to speed in a hurry but uh, I run it at about maybe 25 or 30 amps for the most part so the inverter and the batteries are just a pair of 6 volt golf cart batteries and uh, those are better, better than 12 volt batteries you know if you run a a couple of say group 24 or group 27 12 volt deep cycle batteries then you have to run them in parallel and that's not as good for the battery and uh, it's better to have the same or a little better capacity because this is 200 and, what is it 225 amp hours 20 hour rate and uh, so that's all uh, that's better than a a pair of 12 volt batteries because using 6 volt batteries you still get you run it in series to get the 12 volts okay and like I said this has the has a built in charger and it's a three stage charger and it, it bulk charges and then once the the bank is fully charged 
it goes into float charge mode. It drops down to 13.2 volts or something like that, which just maintains it. And uh, it also has a, uh, it's the standby model, which is what, it's a U2512SB. SB meaning standby. And that means it's got a relay in it. And that's where the other half of the power cord went. I can plug it into the power pole or whatever. Plug it in at the house, plug it into my generator, whatever I need. And uh, it will charge the batteries and at the same time it switches in the relay and powers the loads directly off the AC. So the inverter is not working at that point, it's just working at a, as a battery charger. And that works out well because the generator carries the load that I'm trying to, to operate while also charging the batteries and that's a good setup. Okay, I don't know if you could hear that, but it just turned off. You know, it was making a humming sound. When I turned that light off, the, the inverter shut down. So, this, it's not connected at either end right now, but this is a six gauge stranded wire that I have running up to the engine compartment. And what I'm going to do there is make a, a switchable uh, charging line so that I can charge it as I drive directly off the alternator as well if I need to you know if I if I use it a lot and then I need to charge it back up while I'm driving I can do that otherwise it's better just to plug in at the end of the day you know if I'm going back home or going to a, a campsite with uh, with electric hookups or whatever so that will give me uh, two ways to charge it. Either charge it from the truck or charge it from external DC. I mean external AC via generator or whatever I have available. And, uh, you know, that way I can be up here on the mountain and have, uh, have power tools. Or I can be camping and have electricity. So there it is.